In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how the ancient civilizations were able to achieve precise, tight-fitted joinery on their stonework, and I'm also going to give an explanation for the presence of nubs or those protrusions that you see on the faces of some of the stonework. In the still picture, you see a typical monolith type construction of wall. This picture is a wall located in Peru. I chose this picture because it has multiple things that it shows that I believe are interesting and I'm going to leave it up for the good part of this video. In the clay model, I'm drawing out how the people that constructed these walls would have started out possibly on a large boulder from their quarry site. I'll briefly demonstrate how they would have taken advantage of their natural fault lines in the boulders, but that's not the new or key point of this video. Again, the key point is to explain the reason for those knobs and to show how they might have got those tight fitting joints. On the clay boulder, I'm using clay tools to remove the clay, but the masons could have used stone hammers to chisel away the stone. First off, they would have removed by planing the face of the limestone or granite a few inches down while working around the layout of the knobs. So I'm just cleaning it up, uh, making it look presentable. Uh, just with the tool, then I'm going to use my thumb, smooth it out, and now you're going to really see a similarity between the clay model and the nubs that are, are presented in the picture. This is not a hard thing to create in clay, but again, I will show you later in the video how those come into use. Now we're going to get into the score lines and the genius behind their method. Now pictured here is a close up of a fitting, a tight fitted joint. And you can see what appears to me to be hammer marks, possibly with the stone. Uh, as you look deeper into that crevice, it looks like the hammer marks are uh, getting smaller. So either lighter taps or a smaller hammer, possibly a smaller hammer to get further down into that groove. What's also um, interesting is that those stones are beveled in. You know, on each side, on each stone, there's a bevel going in. And that's what I'm creating with that tool there. In order to get that groove really deep, they would have had to have widened out that valley. If you want to get a hammer tool in deep, you need to first bevel out those edges. You know, without having a saw that I can get down in there really fine. With just a hammer, you're going to have to really bevel those out so you can get that hammer down in there. Now coming up, we're going to cut to a clip where it's we're just going to go and let the that front slab of it fall over. When you when you fell it like that, like felling a tree, when you fell it, it breaks along the score lines. Just like if you were to score a brick, you know, and you go to break it with a hammer, it's going to break right along that score line. So I think that that's what they did. I think those protrusions there, those protrusions help that break. Those protrusions, those nubs are right on that brake line. So it's going to be the first thing to hit the ground. And it's going to really jack those stones and help it break along those score lines. So, you know, they now what they do is they just they pick the stones up. 
they're already in pieces. It's the simplest method. They found the simplest way. So now they're they're just they're gonna piece those stones together. And it just happens that they fit together perfectly. I don't think that that was their intention to make them fit so tightly. Having them fit tightly like that is just a byproduct of them felling it and the stone breaking it along the score lines. You know, you put it together as a wall. I'm just leaning against the uh, clay boulder there just to prop it up. But then you would just continue to uh, finish the face of it. You know, if you're either going to remove those knobs or leave them on there. As you can see in that picture, some of them were removed. And the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the stone was also further planed to remove those bevels. Just like you see in that picture. On the bottom, those bevels were removed. The face of the stone was planed further down, and then on the top, not only were the knobs still intact, but also the bevels. They didn't plane the face of those. I refer to this method as a score and fell technique. Thank you for watching.